My wife Megan and I, I'm 27, she's 26 when? My story begins have only been married for three years, but lately it's as if things haven't gone according to plan even though I've been convinced since the first day I met her that Megan is the love of my life the situation has suddenly become complicated Megan seems to be in a bad mood most of the time and her explanation is that I pay too much attention to other women including our friends last night the standard argument became more intense than in the past because I was finally tired for God's sake Megan even though I've never given you a reason to question my fidelity you continue to treat me like I'm a cheater or soon to be cheater what's your problem I trust you despite your minor though far more significant than mine flirtations but if I even tell one of your friends that I like her dress you act like I've been cheating on her for the last month I yelled able to contain my voice nor the hair on the back of my neck nor my flushed face we screamed at each other for the next ten minutes before she ran out of the living room of our rented house crying she locked the master bedroom door as I was about to go to bed I told her to open it or I would kick it open she refused apparently not believing either that I would try or that I could or that she just didn't care I don't no which a minute later she was already leaving for the second bedroom walking past the broken door lock despite my annoyance I fell asleep quickly worried only that since I couldn't lock the bedroom door she might castrate me in my sleep the next morning I made blueberry pancake sausage and a Kona 7 coffee from Paradise Roasters rated 95 almost the highest ever her favorite breakfast as a reconciliation she wasn't very social but she ate and drank with gust then I started talking about the basketball game she bought tickets for on Saturday afternoon she played in high school and division the three college and she likes the game but given the explosion yesterday I didn't know if she was going with me even though she bought the tickets they were in my possession I was going to go anyway she acted like she was doing me a favor but she still agreed to go and we even exchanged a couple of not so sarcastic words on the way their next chapter when we got to the basketball arena I was happy to see that the tickets were as good as she had envisioned them to be they were in the lower section about midway between the east basketball hoop and the half court line Megan likes to sit on the aisle to stretch out her long legs she is six feet one inch in tall or 185 cm if you prefer the metric system even though I am four and ten centimeters taller than her I let her do what she likes we watched the warm-up in silence until she said I started staring at one of the defenders from the visiting team no I'm not gay it was a women's game this elicited a few snide remarks from her which didn't subside when a man and a woman walked past us as we stood the woman took the seat next to me and the guy took the seat next to her closer to the half court I didn't get a good look at them as they passed us but the guy appeared to be about Megan's height and if I didn't think so smile thinly at Megan and the woman was about five feet seven inches and 170 centimeters tall they looked to be about the same age as Megan and me even during the first quarter of the game American college women's games last four quarters not two halves like men's games Megan kept making snide comments such as oh look your girlfriend just hit a three-pointer which I ignored it was harder to ignore the snide comments that the guy sitting one 
seat over for me was making to the woman sitting next to me they were even more sarcastic than Megan's the woman seemed to be trying to ignore him at the end of the first quarter the home team was winning 16 14 without saying anything Megan got up and walked down the stairs toward the seating area the guy from the seat next to her came out shortly after her ass while forcing the woman sitting next to him and me to stand up to let him pass it was then that I first noticed that the woman was cute after the woman and I sat down our gazes briefly met since misery loves company I said to her your companion seems to be in as bad a mood as my wife if you were just my companion I'd be gone by now she grinned but he's my husband at least for the moment instead of dwelling on our mutual misery I talked to her about basketball in college she played guard on a division the three team I couldn't score worth a damn but I led the conference in assists and you did you play she said then asked yeah my wife and I played at the same college I was short for a power forward but made up for it with intensity one couldn't score either but I was great on defense and led and rebounds my senior year I replied what do you do now she asked I'm um, an aspiring lawyer I replied so now instead of throwing elbows I'm filing briefs how about you I work as the assistant director of admissions at our hometown team's main campus she replied I personally along with my coach lobbied for the enrollment of Kate Simmons the girl on our team who led all scores in the first quarter she proudly stated Megan then returned with a beer for herself nothing for me and shortly thereafter this woman's husband returned at least he had two beers one for his wife and our conversation ended next chapter at halftime Megan left again without saying a word to me maybe to the restroom or to get popcorn or a beer I don't know the husband of the woman sitting next to me also got up to leave the woman moved out of the way and I stood up to let him pass he said a curt thank you to me but didn't say anything to his wife the woman and I resumed our conversation from the end of the first quarter I see your husband's mood hasn't improved a bit in the second quarter I chuckled though it wasn't funny yeah I don't know what to say it sounds like his problem is jealousy and that makes me wonder don't a lot of psychiatrists say that when someone exhibits a certain irrational trait they believe that everyone is just like them and that it's a manifestation of guilt I think you're right I've noticed that especially when it comes to honesty dishonest people are always suspicious of other people's scruples because they think everyone is as crooked as themselves I replied making really intense eye contact with her for the first time we talked for a couple more minutes probably smiling at each other that must have been why the kiss cam focused on us when the woman said oh underscore underscore and pointed to the giant video screen hanging over center court I saw the two of us on the screen as clearly as I saw her live sitting next to her with our hearts projected around us we had amazed and bewildered looks on our faces the audience still seated in the audience and not getting any beer or nachos began chanting kiss 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 the woman and I looked at each other so shall we go I asked with a wide grin on my face why not my husband doesn't seem to be in the mood she giggled back I had intended to just smack her lips but when our lips met they were so sweet they reminded me of the refrain from a very old song honey dripping from your sweet s lips at the time I thought it was from 
an Elvis song, but later searching the internet, I found out it was from a Charlie Gracie song called Butterfly, which meant that the kiss went on for a very long time. Apparently, I put a lot more emotion into it than I thought I would because the crowd started applauding. Wildly, finally, we mutually broke the kiss, and when we looked at the video, Screen again, it flashed red hot with little fireworks and rocket symbols. Almost like a video fireworks display. Thankfully, after about 10 seconds, the screen started showing the first half stats. The woman and I were silent for a full minute. I know I was uncomfortable, and she probably was. Too, when I finally turned to her, her face was flushed. I assumed mine was too. I stuttered us since we were obviously the best entertainment of the break. I should at least know your name. My name is Aaron. I said, holding out my hand. She took it and mumbled, I'm Julie. Sorry, I got carried away. I didn't mean to know. Problem, I replied, I'm afraid I am. Two, we both stared straight ahead without saying another word when Megan returned a few minutes. Later she asked me what was that, cheering a few minutes ago giving me hope that she hadn't seen. And my honest answer was this too. Reluctant people were making out in the kissing booth having said that I looked. At Julie she had a devilish grin on her face the rest of the game went relatively quiet except for the fact that both Megan and Julie's husband left. Their seats again between the third and fourth quarters, but didn't return with any goodies I thought they must have. Small bladders, even though I hadn't noticed that about Megan. Before, while they were gone, Julie and I made harmless conversation. Thankfully, the kiss cam never showed up again, Megan. And I didn't kill each other in the second half, and neither did Julie and her. Husband, the home team trashed the visitors in the second half, so none of the fans were in. Suspense, Megan and her husband left with about six minutes left in the game when they got up and left Megan and I sidestepped to let them pass as Julie walked past me. She discreetly slipped something into my hand. I discreetly tucked it into my pocket. It was a piece of Paper Megan and I left the arena Ana. With three minutes left in the game on the way home I tried to be as chipper as possible and talk more about the fighter. Points of the game when we got home I made dinner and opened a bottle of Megan's favorite wine something I don't usually do my motives weren't pure my libido had strangely increased after the game end. Given Megan's recent mood in our fight, last night I decided I needed to get her. Drunk and although it took a lot of effort and a bit of luck, good food and two bottles of wine which she drank. Without much help from me Sunday morning I pulled the pants I wore to the basketball game out of the closet and looked in the front right pocket on a piece of paper it said Julie and a phone number unless she was really mad obviously her cell phone number it made me remember the hallucinations of the previous evening I memorized the phone number and then swallowed the piece of paper first person narrative Julie Waters at the time my story began I was 28 my husband Drick was 29 and we had been Married for over four years, but less than five, I was convinced that Derek was the love of my life almost from the day I met him for most of the time I'd known him. Drick had been a balanced guy, passionate when needed, but most of the time calm. That all changed a few months ago. Suddenly something I'd been doing that was reasonably considered harmless to Entire time we'd been together together. Caused him to turn into a jealous. 
underscore underscore one of his acts of jealousy. Really puzzled and pissed me. Off we were at a casual outdoor party. And I was just talking to a guy named Jeremy that we both knew Jeremy laughed at something I said and briefly touched my arm. Derek came over and shoved him in. Derek had no excuse for being drunk in. My mind that is not an excuse, but he couldn't even try that pathetic excuse. I was so stunned that I didn't hear either Dirk's words or Jeremy's. Kurt reply, I squeezed myself between them and explicitly told Dirk to cool it. He walked away angry. I apologized to Jeremy and he seemed to agree but left the party shortly after Derek refused to even talk about it that night and for the next few days. There was an icy atmosphere in the waters household. I'm usually a perceptive person, but I had a hard time understanding Derek from the beginning of his job phase and I thought things were on the men end when Derek announced that he had bought us tickets to Saturday's women's basketball game at the university where I work as the assistant director of admissions. Derek knows I love basketball since I played in high school and division the three college so I was excited he assured me that these were good places to be. Derek seemed so excited and pleased with himself that I didn't even mention that given my situation I could get some discounted tickets to the game when we got to the game I saw that the seats he took were better than the ones you usually get with discount tickets so I was glad I didn't say anything we passed a tall couple as we walked to our seats Derek smiled at the woman who was about his height and I Smiled at the cute guy though he didn't react in any way and probably didn't even notice me given his recent actions I was surprised that Derek had asked me to sit next to the guy maybe he was coming out of his state of mind or maybe it was just because his seat was two or three T closer to the Hubbard and therefore he found it more desirable my hopes of Derek coming out of his depression evaporated when he made a few snide remarks to me I decided it was best to just ignore him and enjoy the game he left his seat between quarters and brought me a beer when he returned at halftime I chatted with the tall good-looking guy next to me he seemed to be having wife or girlfriend Problem similar to mine and Derek's at. Halftime Derek and the tall guy's wife. Left the seating area probably to get a. Snack or go to the restroom Derek. Didn't say the tall guy and I exchanged. Pleasantries it turned out we were both. College basketball. Players about 10 minutes after halftime. I looked up at the large video screen. Above the playing floor and was shocked. To see the kiss cam focused on me and the tall guy I'm sure my face turned red when I pointed it out to him the audience who hadn't yet left to get popcorn or go to the restroom room started chanting kiss 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 my boyfriend and I looked at each other so shall we go he asked with a wide grin on his face why not my husband doesn't seem to be in the mood I replied Cheekily, I intended to just smack him on the lips, but when our lips met his lips were so commanding and masculine that all I could think about was Cher singing it's in his kiss to SHSH, my mom's favorite song that was always playing when she cooked dinner. I was too caught up in the kiss and was almost in a dreamy state when I was brought out of it by the raucous. Applause we broke the kiss and when I looked at the video screen again there were fireworks and the word hot flashing with various adjectives in front of it. Thankfully after a while the crowd noise 
subsided and the video screen began to display the stats of the game I was. Shocked didn't know what to say and I'm sure I was blushing like a beat the turn to me and stammered and said uh, since we were apparently the best entertainment at halftime I should at least know your name I'm Aaron he said holding out his hand I took it and mumbled I'm Julie sorry I got carried away I didn't mean to the refrain of it's and his kiss was still echoing in my brain no problem he replied me neither being in an almost come off state I still smile when Aaron's wife returning a few minutes later asked him what was the cheering a few minutes I go as far as I can recall he replied two reluctant people got into the kissing chamber and the crowd seemed to enjoy the spectacle it was all I could do not to laugh next chapter after the kiss cam incident I tried to focus on the game but I couldn't shake the feeling of the power of errands kiss at halftime of the fourth quarter I discreetly tore a page out of a small notebook in my purse and wrote my name and cell phone number on and I discreetly handed it to Aaron as Derek and I left and the outcome of the game was no longer in doubt I didn't know what exactly I was thinking when I did it because I certainly had no desire to cheat if Derek's attitude didn't change it would be divorced first and then having fun with someone else but I passed the note anyway that note and the next day turned out better than the last few weeks at least in the waters household perhaps it had something to do with the fact that I had fun with Derek on Saturday night when I got to work on Monday one of the secretaries in my office laughingly showed me the videotape of the kiss cam incident I blushed again fortunately all the reproaches heaped on me were good natured and everyone seemed satisfied with the trivial explanation I don't know why but after seeing this video which she promised to delete I decided to look up Aaron online it took me about 20 minutes to find the six feet five inches in power forward from the division the three school he played for I was pleased to see that he accurately reflected his stats I did another frivolous internet search how long can you make out without a partner more than 10 seconds was the generally accepted answer I smiled to myself memorizing that answer and then cursed myself for not being able to get Shar's song SHSH out of my head third person report after giving it some thought and not intending to cheat Aaron Jacobi decided to call Julie Watt's cell phone Tuesday after Saturday's basketball game Julie answered on the first ring I was wondering if you would call Aaron Jacoby Julie answered in a sing-song voice I you saw my last name on the caller ID Aaron grinned I knew that before from what you told me at the game I found you online the school you went to doesn't have many six five and four or two led the team and rebounds their senior year but I'm glad you didn't inflate your stats she grinned well now I'm at a disadvantage Aaron grinned I didn't have the sense to try and find you so maybe you'll just give me your last name oh no fun with you Julie laughed but since you were kind enough to call I'll tell you it's waters my my Mary last name my maiden name is Reynolds however you need to find me to make sure I don't inflate my statistics I will but first I'm wondering why you gave me your phone number because I wanted you to call after you took advantage of my poor innocent little self at the basketball game and considering the crap I got at the office from my co-workers one of who even taped the screen I think you 
Should buy me. Lunch okay, Aaron laughed even if that's. Not true, I don't know of single reason. Not to have lunch with you, how about the. Pot belly deli on Prescott and Vine it's. About the same distance from campus in. My office sound. Good, I was thinking Lane Julie grinned. Referring to the most expensive. Restaurant within a 100M radius, but pot. Belly will do what day in. Time how about Friday 12.30 reply. Aaron works for me, see you then, Julie. Replied in her sing-song voice before. Ending the conversation. Weird Aaron chuckled to. Himself next. Chapter Aaron and Julie arrived at pot. Belly at the same time on Friday end. Smiled as Aaron opened the door in front. Of them and they stepped inside they. Placed their order at the counter Aaron. Paid and then found the far table and. Placed the 14 in order sign on it Aaron. Either hadn't gotten a good look at. Julie except for her lips on Saturday or. She'd really washed her face well. Because she looked much more attractive. Then he. Remembered her emerald eyes seemed like. Lasers and contrasted beautifully with. Her gorgeous brown hair with flecks of. Red Julie had gotten a good look at. Aaron not just his lips on Saturday and. He looked just as impressive. Today she loved his blonde hair piercing. Blue eyes broad shoulders and such a. Sweet smile framed by cute. Dimples Julie and Aaron just chatted. About their lives and backgrounds while. Waiting to order and during their meal. It was a pleasant conversation for both. Of them and they often looked into each. Others eyes obviously fascinated by the. Intensity of their. Irises when they had finished Julie said. Do you have time to go to Veterans Park? It's within walking. Distance sounds good, Aaron replied I. Don't have to get back to the office. Until a 4-2. 3 they moved toward the park without any. Body contact chatting amicably about. Current events when they reached the. Park Julie led them to a distant bench. And sat them down Aaron politely. Followed with a devilish grin on her. Face Julie turned to face Aaron and looked into his soul. I'm a very straightforward person, Aaron. That's why I gave you my number and wanted to meet with you. I have a plan of action, really. Grinned Aaron. Yes, really, Julie grinned. Back as you may have noticed from Saturday's game, Derek has been really annoying me lately. He's the love of my life and I want him back with the man I Married so I have no intention of getting rid of him, but things have to change. I noticed during the game that you seem to be in the same position as me. Aaron opened his eyes wide almost in the same position. Megan is the love of my life, but something has to change. I can't keep living the way I've been living for the last two or three months. That's one of the reasons I Wanted to meet you, Julie continued, maybe. By gathering our thought thoughts we can. Find a way to give back what we had with. The people we hoped and expected would. Become our life. Partners maybe by exchanging opinions. And ideas we can air and smile truly. Perking up for the first time in a long. Time there's a second reason I want to. Meet with you that I'd rather not tell. You about, but since I'm always straightforward, I'll tell you anyway. Julie replied with a yes. Smile, I'm a lifelong planner, which is what the admissions office relies on in my job, and I want to provide for all contingencies, and one of those contingencies would be you throwing Derek out. I'm surprised a striker can be so astute, she laughed with a smile that Seen more than pleasant to Aaron, yes. That's exactly what I mean without. Wanting to sound cavalier, I'll tell you. Straight up, you're the only person I've. Been interested in since I started. Making long-term plans about three months. 
A ghost, so did I scare you. Off after a long pause during which both. Interlocutors grinned slightly Aaron. Replied not yet I may not be as far. Along as you are and I'm not one to jump. From one relationship to another but I. Must admit that you are intriguing and. Sultry what role do I play in your. Scheme I'm glad you weren't rude enough. To propose to me Julie replied grinning. Even wider I have no intention of. Cheating however your kiss honestly even. Though I'm going to blush talking about. It was definitely one of the top five. Kisses of my. Life so I'd like to have a casual. Relationship perhaps a few kisses and. Hugs for a while while we both watch our. Marriages grow while we try to help each. Other rekindle what we had with those we. Hope would be the loves of our lives so. That we evaluate each other in case. Things don't work out the way we'd like. With our. Spouses maybe we'll meet once a week or. So for an hour or two tell each other. How things are going exchange ideas and. See if we have a mutual interest in each. Other if our marriages fall. Apart Aaron stared intently at Julie for. The next few minutes and neither of them. Seemed interested in breaking eye. Contact except for a few fleeting. Blinks finally Aaron said you're a. Really straightforward person Julie I. Like that no need to beat around the. Bush I'm not interested in cheating. Either but a few kisses and hugs never. Heard anyone Megan does it at every party. We go to at this Aaron said only to. Himself but not like the plasma kiss we. Gave each other for kiss Kim text me. This weekend when and where we'll meet. Next week. Okay sounds like a plan Julie grinned. But first let me give you some advice. About Megan don't let the situation. Escalate make her sit down and listen to. You tell her that she's the love of your. Life and you want the one you married. Back and give her time for this to. Settle. Down after a long pause Aaron replied. Good advice I was thinking about it. Myself but after hearing you say it I. Believe it's a really good idea how. About you are there any pearls of wisdom. I could impart from her guys. Perspective just one why did Derek get. Physically intimate with the guy I was. Just talking to I can't be sure because. I don't know him or that guy but I think. You should start by cornering Derek and. Getting him to tell you why this. Situation pissed him off so much and if. There's anything you can do to prevent. It in the future Aaron. Smiled Julie thought for a moment good. Advice she smiled back and they got up. From the bench and walked back to. Julie's car not making body contact but. Chatting more. Amicably when they reached her car Julie. Said that's me thanks for. Lunch I didn't get dessert Aaron said. And then gently pulled Julie to him for. A kiss she stopped him wait she said. Pulling a watch out of her pocket what's. This aeon and laugh that timed it on a. Video my coworker took of us kissing on. The kiss cam had lasted about 28 seconds. If the internet is to be believed a. Proper kiss shouldn't last more than 10. Seconds let me know when you're ready. And I'll start my timer which is set for. 10 seconds it has a beep when the time. Runs out Julie. Grind are you serious started to ask. Aaron but Julie interrupted him I just. Started the timer don't waste any time. She said with a smirk. They reluctantly broke their kiss as the. Timer buzzed Julie smiled and said nice. Very nice opening the car door and. Settling her slender body into the. Drivers. Seat Aaron waved goodbye as she drove. Away Aaron was surprisingly productive. Returning to work at 2.40 p.m. preparing. Some interrogatories and requests for. Admissions for one of the lawsuits he. Was working on with the senior partner. 
getting some assignments to the parlor, and then heading home around 5 p.m. It was on the way home that his thoughts returned to his meeting with Julie Aaron, was in complete agreement with her plan to do everything possible to get the couple out of the jealousy phase while assessing how compatible they would be. If things didn't work, out as Julie drove home from the college, admissions officer thoughts were similar to Aaron. She was really trying to make things work with Derek, but was perhaps a little more pessimistic than Aaron. Next chapter when Aaron got home Friday night, he was pleased to see that Megan seemed to be in a better mood than before they went out for an early dinner in a casual setting, but then Megan jumped on him about promising to help a friend who was having a crisis. Aaron took offense that she hadn't mentioned it sooner and that it might interfere with their time together. She promised to make it up to him when she returned, although Megan got home later than he had hoped she was in a good mood. Took a quick shower and went to bed. Aaron thought we'll talk to her. Tomorrow after breakfast on Saturday. Morning Aaron uttered the words most. Husbands dread when their wives utter. Them honey we need to talk about what? Megan replied reproachfully you're the love of my life but you've changed in. The last few months you seem to be. Constantly jealous makes snide remarks. About my reactions to other women can be cold and insensitive at times and are often in a bad mood. I want the woman I married back and I want to know what I need to do to get her back. Megan hesitated for a long time. Tried every possible diversion including you're just imagining things. But when Aaron took her hands in his and wouldn't listen, she finally burst into Tears there and gave her a few minutes to recover and wipe away her tears then as gently as he could he said okay come on. Megan took a deep breath and then said at the last party at your firm about three months ago I overheard a conversation between two par gal and one of the secretaries they were talking about how great you looked and acted in that day. Couldn't believe you were stuck with Stories they called me they also implied that you probably had a wandering eye and were thinking of ways to get you into bed Aaron was a little taken aback by this his first answer was honest there isn't a single woman in my firm who looks as good as you so why should what they said bother you you just saying that Megan replied after another deep breath no. It's the truth, Aaron replied firmly. Who were these women? I only know the name of one of them. Carol, one of them was about 52 and the other had red hair and freckles. Megan replied without looking up. That's Cynthia and Wendy. Aaron laughed. Wendy is a uh, underscore underscore and is about half as good as you. I can't believe what those three underscore underscore said could have had any effect on you. Although Aaron was saying this to reassure Megan he had a hard time believing her since Carol Cynthia and Wendy were nothing like he had socialized within the past and none of them had ever hit on him he'd figure that out later but right now he just needed to make up well that's the way it was besides I was watching you closely. After that, and you seem to really perk up when a pretty woman walks by. For God's sake, Megan, I'm a guy, Aaron. Grin people on a diet are allowed to look at the dessert menu without getting fat while my perception doesn't match. Yours, that doesn't mean anything. I'm not interested in anyone, but you, that's if you're the woman I married and not the woman I've been for the past few. Months Aaron, not the most perceptive guy in the world, couldn't figure out why, but his words didn't seem to have as 
positive an effect on Megan as he thought they would nevertheless she didn't recoil to the side but she still didn't make a contact anxious to correct any slip up he continued I want to be sensitive to your feelings even if it means nothing I'll try not to look at other women except in social situations when everyone is socializing okay Megan replied currently okay finally making eye contact then she asked are we going to the tennis club this morning I'd like to get some practice and I have a tournament match against Abby Blaine tomorrow oh underscore underscore Aaron thought to himself Abby Blaine was a underscore underscore but she was the most beautiful woman in the state he'd have to buy sunglasses before the match since he was sure Megan would want him there if only to test his resolve next chapter Friday night at Julie's didn't go as well as Aaron although he was an A prize when she got home Dirk announced that he was going bowling with the guys when did this come to light asked Julie I told you about it on Monday replied Derek well the hell with you snorted Julie I wouldn't forget about something like that and just last night I mentioned the possibility of going out to dinner tonight and you said okay I must not have listened to you he grinned his smirk was not wise you're a got him underscore underscore Julie growled you got so upset about me just talking to a guy at a party that you got into a physical confrontation with him and acted like I was a underscore underscore yet you think you can dictate to me you think it's appropriate to ignore me because what I say doesn't matter and then just dump me on Friday night aren't you afraid I'll be promiscuous underscore underscore Derek hadn't seen Julie this pissed off in a long time he decided to choose his words carefully look I'm sorry if there was any misunderstanding either at the party or tonight why don't I call my friends and tell them I'll only come over after I take you to dinner Julie calm down just as long as it's not Burger King or Wendy she replied with a stone face and arms crossed how about yet we can eat real Italian food and it won't take all night so I'll only miss a half hour or so of bowling please Julie I'll also get a foot massage tonight Ely was a good local trattoria so Julie agreed and Derek went into the other room to call his bowling buddies while Julie changed over dinner Julie and Derek had quite a decent conversation including some about their days Julie forgot to mention her lunch with Aaron but instead complimented Derek on some of his mid-year admissions essays when Derek got home that evening Julie was already asleep next chapter Aaron checked with Carol Wendy and Cynthia separately about what Megan had told him all three emphatically denied that they had discussed anything it said party and had never been all three together at the same time all three also adamantly denied ever under any circumstances calling Megan a store or even thinking about it two of them said they envied Megan's height and physique all three blushed slightly when asked about trying to get Aaron to cheat on them but honestly replied I never hit on you and you know it Aaron thanked and believed all three of them and bought each of them a pair of earrings about the same time that Aaron was questioning Carol Wendy and Cynthia Julie was making subtle inquiries about Derek's bowling excursion with the wives of the only people Julie could remember him bowling with not that she didn't trust Derek cough cough but she also didn't fail to look at his cars odometer after dinner on Friday and before he got up Saturday 
warning none of the information she'd gotten fit with his bowling story, though. It wasn't impossible that it was. True next. Chapter for the next four weeks, Julie. And Aaron met for an hour or two once a week most often over lunch and sometimes for something else neither of them got. The reaction from their spouses that they were looking for and both wondered why they were under the impression that their spouses were lying or that their jealousy was the result of guilt on their part. Nothing they suggested to each other helped true they ended each meeting with a ten-second kiss which both seemed to be getting better with time during their last meeting on Monday. Afternoon Julie had a desperate plan. Brewing I'm at my limit air and I think I need to shock Derek into going from unacceptable to unacceptable within four months. Do you feel the same way, Aaron? Thought for a moment, but then said I never thought I'd say this, but yes, I do. Julie sighed and said, here's the plan. You bring Megan to my house next weekend. We can call and arrange a time wheel. Meet with them together, tell them we weren't in a relationship, but we're disappointed with them, and if nothing changes, we'll divorce them and leave. Together, Aaron raised his eyebrows. What? If they go for the bluff who says it's a bluff, Julie hummed and pulled Aaron to. Her Aaron meekly replied, give me a couple days to think about it and give it one last try with Megan, maybe I'll agree to it, maybe Julie giggled Aaron. We quite next chapter Tuesday night. Aaron made another attempt with Megan. Although she offered a few platitudes, she mostly brushed them off on Wednesday. Aaron called Julie and they arranged to meet the couple on Saturday at 2 p.m. at Dirk and Julie's house, Julie Waters's firsters account by the time Aaron and I agreed to meet with Derek and Megan on Saturday at noon about their unacceptable behavior threatened divorce and a hope. Together I was ready to put Derek out of my mind how he had gone from the expected love of my life to the underscore underscore he was now was baffling to me while I wanted this to be my last attempt I'm not sure I wanted it to succeed as far as I could tell Aaron was everything that Derek had been when I fell in love with him plus Aaron had a thing called in his kiss that was not only unrivaled in my experience but beyond my most unrealistic expectations I made it clear to Derek that he had to be back from Saturday's golf game no later than 1.30 p.m. as important guests would be arriving and that if he didn't return the locks would be changed I even had him on the phone with the locksmith I'd already paid to be on standby Derek wasn't happy but I knew he would Comply Aaron and Megan arrived EX. Exactly at two o'clock Megan looked better than I remembered, but she looked very nervous when I called Derek into the living room to greet the guests his face. Lost all its color, his jaw dropped and Megan's eyes widened suddenly I had a Eureka. Moment I introduced Megan and Dirk after. Aaron introduced me to her I noticed. That Megan and Derek calmed down a bit. When I introduced them and politely said, Nice to meet you as they shook hands. I know I shocked Aaron to death when I started chatting cheerfully and then made that statement although he seemed to calm down when I secretly winked at him Aaron and I met at a basketball game. We went to six Saturdays ago. I don't know if you two Derek and Megan remember each other from that game Derek said ingenuously I thought you looked familiar Megan now I remember Megan replied yes you do look familiar anyway I continued in Aeon and 
I had a nice chat at break in half. Talked on the phone a few times since. Then and we both realized that we liked. Bowling and we wanted you to get to know. Each other so we made plans to go. Bowling. Today Aaron and I haven't bowled in A. While and Aaron said that Megan used to. Bowl and I know you go bowling sometimes. Derek so I thought it might be a chance. To meet some new. Friends Aaron was still puzzled but let. Me run the show Derek and Megan seemed. To smile in. Relief so what I did and I hope this. Isn't too cheeky of me is make a. Reservation at Southside Bowl and. Billiards for the 230 track I know you. Know where that is Derek because you've. Bowled there with your male buddies and. Aaron and Megan can go straight from. There because I know he has a surprise. Dinner reservation with Megan and so we. Can get to know each other better I'll. Go with Aaron and direct him there and. Derek you can take Megan if we leave now. We can get there just in. Time I noticed Megan and Derek glanced. Over and then smiled softly Aaron's eyes. Were big but he didn't say anything when. I got to Aaron's car he jokingly asked. What does the mystery woman give you go? To Chester Street and turn right aisle. Explain everything as soon as I call I. Replied pulling out my cell. Phone I called the Southside Bowl and. Begged for a lane to be allocated to me. At. 2.30 after offering the owner $50 he. Agreed to skip the line and provide us. With a lane no later than. 240 I then turned to Aaron what. Restaurant should I call to get you in? Megan a reservation for. Tonight what Aaron left are you going? To tell me what's going on I promise. I'll tell you when I make a reservation. How about Ely it's a restaurant that. Durer can I go to sometimes they know. Me it's a good local Italian trattoria I. Said okay he grinned I called and tried. To make a reservation for 7 o'clock p.m. but. Had to settle for. 6.30 okay the 6.30 table is in your name. I'll text the information from there. Website to your phone right. Now after I send him a text with that. Information I said now I can. Explain please explain he laughed I was. Very pleased that he took this change of. Planned so well and didn't mess anything. Up of course since he's a guy pardon the. Female chauvinism he never realized what. I'd done Derek and Megan are having an. Affair what the hell he exclaimed near. Driving off the road and getting along. Home from someone driving in the. Neighboring lane it's clear from there. Reaction that they knew each other and. Were scared to death that we brought. Them together to confront them about. It they breathed a sigh of relief when I. Came up with the bowling. Story we could meet tomorrow exchange. Information about their activities. Unleash a private investigator on them. And then decide what we should. Do continuing with our current plan. Would be a bad idea as their affair will. Increase our exposure to the situation. When not if we divorce them I snorted. Rather than said anything then I. Realized what I had done was. Presumptuous sorry I mean when I. Divorce Derek you obviously have to. Make the decision. Yourself if we get ironclad proof that. Megan is history and I want to get you. First Aaron muttered and then grinned. Placing his hand on my knee for the. First time in our. Relationship you mean you want to get my. Crack first I giggled. You're so gross he. Grin for the rest of the trip we made. Plans for when and where to meet the. Next day and came up with ideas for IP. The bowling alley owner helped us out. And by 235 we were setting up the. Scoring computer and tying bowling. Laces Megan and Derek calmed down when. They realized we weren't going to take. Them. 
out there and was deliberately polite and I was as fake nice as I'd ever been in my life I was pretending to have a good time and the others may have actually been having fun although I doubt Aaron was as happy as he seemed I did have fun with Derek that night firsters narrative by Aaron Jacoby Megan seemed to like yet and she bought Julie's story that I surprised her by taking her there for dinner afterward we went to a club dance till we dropped and that night we got down to it if what Julie said was true it was one of my last times with Megan and I didn't feel any guilt for about Julie I scrutinized my calendar for the past four months and did some online and credit card searches before meeting Julie on Sunday at 2 p.m. in the conference room next to her office at the university we quickly established at least six dates including Friday night when Derek allegedly went bowling and Megan went to help a friend in crisis when Derek and Megan may well have met it was also clear that they worked in the same office building there companies were only three floors apart and Julie's check of Derek's personal credit card showed that he had bought all four tickets to the Saturday night basketball game we went to we were at A loss as to why they would go to A basketball game with us Julie eventually concluded and I agreed with her that there were two reasons the first was to see if we suspected they were having fun the second was to get another chance to be together when I thought back on it they both left their seats after each quarter perhaps to fondle each other or laugh at how clueless we were by 3 30 p.m. Sunday we were sure they were having an affair and had mapped out three possible EPS on Monday I would visit two of them Julie would visit the other and we would both visit the one that seemed most appropriate we ended our meeting with a kiss but we had no intention of continuing the relationship until the divorce papers were filed Julie made it clear that she would file the papers as soon as she received proof from the private investigator she had already met with the attorney a friend of her brother-in-laws who had a reputation as the meanest orca in the state I had already spoken to the orca woman on the phone and she was willing to represent me once we had the evidence and I met with her in person if the evidence obtained by the private investigator met our expectations I would go for a divorce as well I had never had a divorce case never wanted to do one and never wanted to involve anyone from my law firm in my personal affairs so I was more than willing to use the same slash as Julie since I knew that once I got proof of Megan's infidelity I would never do it with her again legally it would be considered reconciliation if I did I knew enough about divorce law from the bar exam to realize this without even talking to an expert and since she was good and I could fantasize that she was Julie between the Sunday Megan and I met and the time we got the private investigators report I was like an elephant and muster the male equivalent of a woman's fever I was hoping I wouldn't were Megan out so that she wouldn't be having fun with Derek when the private investigator found out but to my surprise she was usually ready and if not I just got her drunk and or gave her a foot massage and then beat her brains out in the doggy pose it was the easiest thing to fantasize about being Julie two weeks and two days after Saturday when Julie concluded that D and Megan were cheating we met with the two private investigators a man and a woman we had assigned to expose them we felt 
The evidence was irrefutable, and when we showed it to our attorney, Judy Orca, that's not her real name, but it had to be she almost drooled after there came the question of exactly how we were going to finalize our divorces. We are fortunate to live in a state and to have an attorney as smart and knowledgeable as Judy that allows the plaintiff in our state that's the person filing for divorce to meet once. The suit is filed and served and the judge issues a preliminary order stating that marital property is not to be reduced or divided without a written agreement between the parties and eliminating the possibility that the, the post-filing relationship could affect the divorce proceedings on the advice of an attorney. Julie and I left our rental housing and moved into an affordable apartment with monthly payments on the same day that the divorce petitions were filed and served they were served on Derek and Megan by the, the same bath on Friday. When they had lunch together we wanted it to happen when they were entertaining. But their schedules were by design lest they get caught unpredictable so we settled on when they were just together just a week after filing and serving the petitions for dissolution of marriage for adultery the judge issued a preliminary order prohibiting dissipation and misappropriation of marital property and barring all counter claims for post-service activities as grounds for divorce the weekend after receiving this ruling Julie and I went on a three-day trip to a four-star resort about 100 miles from home. I thought I knew Julie pretty well. By the time we went to the resort, I found that she had many surprises 99% of, which ranged from wonderful to fabulous. Next chapter, what didn't surprise me was that from what Julie said and from what I observed of Derek, his attempt at Reconcile was formal what was surprising was that Megan appeared to actually try to reconcile if she had tried to do that before filing for divorce maybe she would have had a chance perhaps there would have been a chance even before Julie and I went to the resort however after the trip to the resort there was no longer a chance for me to be happy with anyone but Julie both divorces were granted. Julie and I were married three weeks after the last one was granted third person report. Epilogue about three years after Julie and Aaron were married. Julie was eight months pregnant and on maternity leave from her job where she was now the director of admissions at a local university. Julie and Rob were at A basketball game for the university's women's team despite having to go to the bathroom several times to deal with a shrunken and strained bladder Julie did her best to be in her seat at halftime given that she had made arrangements with the institution's IT department at the break Julie smiled broadly and turned Aaron's head toward the large screen above the court Directly in front of them, just like four years ago, they were in the heart of Kiss. Kim, this time, Aaron said nothing as they locked lips and he gently stroked her. Belly siren bells and fireworks exploded as the entire crowd cheered in the lovers individually inwardly expressed immense gratitude for the reunion there. Exes had organized for years ago the and thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it so subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.